This is the second part of my two-part how to use GitHub for software development mini-series. In the first part, we looked into the advantages of GitHub as well as the alternatives. We also investigated my GitHub setup before getting into some programming. If you didn't see it, go check it out. And the link is in the description below. And now I will provide you with my full GitHub workflow while getting some real work done on my Android Docker open source project. I will also provide you with useful commentary and tips. My physical work environment. Before anything, here is how my work setup physically looks like. I like keeping a clean desk with minimal clutter, so I do not get distracted. I'm using an early 2015 MacBook Pro, which is the latest MacBook Pro without the butterfly keyboard. I knew that Apple would screw up the new keyboard, so I rushed to buy a new MacBook with an old and robust keyboard design. It turned out to be the investment of the century, since all the new MacBook keyboards are plagued with malfunctions. I use a high precision gaming mouse and a good mouse pad, since it makes doing precise movements with the mouse easier. It is especially useful while creating graphics for my apps and games or editing videos. I have a 4K 30 inch monitor in front of me, but I only use it while demonstrating something to someone else on my desk. Otherwise, I only use the Max monitor. Since I want to be distraction free, I use every app in full screen. This eliminates the need for an external monitor since it only makes the full screen apps bigger. This may or may not work for you, but it helps me keep a laser-like focus. Tip. I used my Mac for this video, but I mostly use my Linux machine while I'm working on my open source projects. If you want to learn how to set up a Manjaro Linux machine, for development and be quite productive with it. I have a dedicated video on this topic and the link is in the description below. I will also have a separate video on how I use my Mac for programming and other tasks. So watch out for that. My full software development workflow using GitHub. Here is how I use GitHub in my day-to-day -day development tasks. For this example, I will finish the remaining tasks on my Android Docker open source project which helps people to build their Android projects inside Docker containers. It is a free and open source project hosted on GitHub. If you want to check it out or use it, the link is in the description. Project organization. I like keeping my repos simple. I try to have all my documentation in simple readme files in Markdown rather than using wikis. I also like keeping my issues list clean and close stale issues whenever I can. It is even possible to set up a stale bot for this purpose, but I didn't do it yet. Finally, I touch the settings only when I need to. There is no need to complicate the repo configurations. Now I will go ahead and finish the pending tasks in my Android Docker project. Let us start by checking out the issues tab to see all the tasks. I always start by prioritizing my tasks. Never let trivial but unimportant tasks get in the way of important work. Especially in open source projects, you will have an endless stream of tasks to do. Always start with the important ones. For this project, updating version numbers of the dependencies is important to do. So let's begin by doing it. Git usage. I will switch to my Git repo using command line and do a git status to see the status of my repo and my current active branch. Git status command shows that I have uncommitted changes from a previous work session. So I will start by investigating it with a git div command, which will display all uncommitted changes. My changes seem intentional, so apparently I just forgot to commit them. Let me commit them with git commit so I can start with a clean git status. Once my git repo is ready for action, I will switch to my code editor. I use Visual Studio Code for smaller projects and IntelliJ for larger ones. I will quickly update the base image version and other dependencies in my Docker file which include Android SDK, build tools, and NDK. After the versions of dependencies are updated, I will go ahead and update the readme file. I want to add a section clearly stating that this project tracks the latest versions of Android tools, and anyone with a specific version need should modify the Docker file according to their needs and rebuild the image. After that is done, I will do a git dev again to review the changes that I have just done and commit and push them to my GitHub repo. We can verify that changes are published to GitHub via visiting the project's page and refreshing it. 
the latest commit message with our updated version numbers will appear on top. After that, I will go to my task list and close that issue. I try to write descriptive close messages for tasks, even in solo projects. It will help my future self greatly. Task 1. Replace Docker base image. I will move on to the next most important task, which is about replacing the base image that I used for my Docker file. When creating a Docker image, it's a good idea to base it on another base image, so you get the most useful tools ready to go. For my project, I'm using an Ubuntu base image. However, it is almost 100 megabytes in size, and I want to replace it with something lighter. So I start by googling around for lighter base image variants, including Alpine Linux and Debian Lite. However, I quickly realized that Alpine Linux has a different package manager, which means existing users of my Docker image, including myself, would have to relearn a whole new different package manager syntax. In addition, Debian Lite does not turn out to be much lighter than Ubuntu base image either. So I decide to close the issue with a descriptive closure message that says that edit complexity of switching base images is not worth saving a few megabytes. I will also leave a comparison of image sizes between Ubuntu and Alpine in that task for future reference. Applied programming principles. I must say that this was a great demonstration of YAGNI principle in action, which stands for you ain't gonna need it. There will be tons of tasks that you assume you need to do or features you feel you need. When you do your research and do a cost versus benefit analysis, not going ahead with the task could turn out to be the best option, as it was in my case here. Yagni principle preaches this. Always think deeply on whether you actually need to do what you plan to do. Analyze the complexity that you might be about to add to your project. See if you can reuse existing work, or just skip it entirely. There are many more such programming principles to keep in mind while making project-related decisions. If you want to learn more about them, I have a separate video for it, and the link is in the description below. Task 2. Fix directory naming conventions. While analyzing whether I should change the base image of my project, I have realized that naming convention of my project directories were a bit off. So I will go ahead and quickly create a task describing the issue. I always try to create tasks for things, even when I plan to do them right away. The issues list serves as a good summary of what has changed or is about to change, so it's a good way of documenting the work, even if it is to be done immediately. After creating the task with a good description, I will go ahead and start experimenting with different project directory naming conventions until I settle with the one that I feel good with. Many programming languages come with guides on how to name your files and directories. Since Docker is not a programming language, but rather a tool, it lacks such guidance, so it is up to your intuition and experience to come up with the best convention. Since this is a rather simple task, I will not go into the details, but I quickly wrap up the name changes and commit them to the repo, and close the task. GitHub pull request flow. For the next task, I decide to go ahead with the one that is related to pushing my new Docker image to Docker Hub. This might require non-trivial changes to the project, so I will use what we call GitHub flow or pull request flow. Let me start by explaining GitHub flow. I will create a fresh new branch. I will do all my work for this task on that branch. To signal everyone else that I'm working on that branch, I will push it to GitHub. Commit by commit, I will push my work to that branch. I will make a commit every time I complete an important part of the task. I also try to write descriptive commit messages since it is important to document your work and changes done to that project by that commit. Next is to create a pull request through GitHub's UI. Making a pull request signals my teammates that I'm done with that task, so changes are ready to be reviewed. Before finally merging my changes, someone or myself will review the code and test it. It could be via deploying the changes to a test or staging environment. Finally, I will merge the changes and close the related task is successfully done. GitHub's own documentation on GitHub Flow is pretty good, and I put the link in the description below if you want to check it out for more info. Task 3. Deploying the Docker image to Docker Hub. Now I will continue with the task in hand of readying my project to be deployed to Docker Hub. I checked out a new branch for it, and I will proceed by googling how to push an image to Docker Hub 
to see the requirements for it. Apparently, the official documentation on Docker's website is pretty good, so I will follow it. As a matter of fact, copying everything command by command worked in my case. Next up, I need to update readme section in the Docker Hub. Since I do not want to maintain two separate readmes for GitHub and Docker Hub, I will look around and see how other projects do it. Turns out, it is possible to automate readme creation if I enable Docker Hub and GitHub integration. But for the moment, I will just modify my readme to fit both hubs and copy paste it to Docker Hub manually. After I'm done with the changes, I will create a pull request on GitHub. First line of description in GitHub pull request will be the magic word. Fixes hashtag one. This is a reference to an issue in the GitHub's issues list. When I merge this pull request, the referenced issue will automatically be closed for me. GitHub has several other such magic words, and I will leave it up to you to discover with joy. Since this is a solo project, I will review my own changes and merge them myself. I will also delete the branch that I used for this pull request, since I do not have any other use for it. Finally, I will go to the referenced issue to verify that it was automatically closed for me. Tip: In near future, I will create a video on how software engineers use Docker and Kubernetes in their daily workflow. So do not forget to sub if you want to see them when they are out. Manual testing. Now is the time to manually test the project. Entire purpose of Android Docker project is to build Android apps inside Docker containers. So let's start by creating a sample Android project with Android Studio. The project must be in the build directory of our repo root. Once that is set and the Android Studio finishes creating the project, I will build it using Android Docker command line. Once the build is finished, I can boot up an Android emulator so I can install the fresh built Android app. I will find and drag the APK file from the build directory onto the Android emulator and wait for the installation to finish. After our APK is installed on the emulator, I can start the sample app. As you can see, it seems to be working perfectly well. Android Docker successfully built the project and everything is functional. If this were a bigger project, I will automate this testing. But for now, manual testing should suffice. Tip. I have another video describing software quality assurance in depth. It goes into the details of automated and manual testing strategies and gives you an idea of how larger software companies test their products. If you want to see it, the link is in the description. Task 4. Project Publicity. Now on to the final task. Since my Docker Hub image is ready for action, I want to announce it to the world. Social media is generally a good place for this. I will start by putting out a tweet with a link to the project's GitHub and Docker Hub pages. I will also use appropriate hashtags so people browsing those hashtags can find my project. I will reuse the same title and the link from the tweet and post it on Reddit also. A word of caution. Social media is a chaotic place. The feedback you will get will vary massively. If you create a genuine useful project, people will find and use it. However, giving it an initial kick and getting some feedback is excellent, as long as you have the nerve to deal with the anonymous. This is all I have planned to do for my Android Docker project. As people use it, new issues will accumulate and I will take care of them. Then I can make another follow-up tutorial on how I handle ongoing feature requests and issues on an open source project. Do not forget to sub if you want to see it in the future. Conclusion. GitHub is a fantastic tool. It brings a full suite of software development tools in one package, and it is adding new features regularly. Being owned by a big enterprise company like Microsoft might mean it can stop innovating and become stale. But until then, it is the best of all options. I highly recommend using it for your private or open source projects. I also recommend using it to its fullest. For instance, use GitHub issues and project board instead of using a third-party project management tool like Trello. Keep your workflow as simple as possible and all together, so when you need to backup or migrate your data, you can do it in one shot. If you want to learn and use GitHub, but do not have a project at the moment, contribute to open source projects on GitHub. Start with the simplest task like updating the readme files 
and move on from there. It will make you a better developer while helping the community. And that is it for this video. If you like this type of how-to guides, give the video a thumbs up. You can also check all the other videos in my how-to playlist using the link in the description below. And I will see you next time.